Radio. This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Welcome to ER Vet on Pet Lake Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Justine Lee, and I'm a board certified emergency critical care veterinary specialist and toxicologist. Thanks for joining us. Today, we're going to be talking about cat eyeballs. We'll be right back after these messages. Do you want a cat litter that absorbs odor causing wetness like a parched desert cactus? Well, Arm & Hammer's got a litter for you. New Absorb X with desert dry minerals. Wetness disappears like a Texas raindrop on a hot tin roof. Odor, adios. It's a lightweight, lightning fast, odor absorbing desert dry cat litter. Get $4 off now at armandhammer.com slash bounty. New Absorb X from Arm & Hammer. More power to you. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to ER Vet and Pet Life Radio. Today, we're going to be talking about cat eye problems. You probably didn't know this. But there are actually veterinary ophthalmologists out there, and these are veterinarians who have advanced training, typically a master's plus a three to four year residency program, and it's a super competitive residency to get. So I think there's only about a thousand veterinary ophthalmologists or less within the whole world. Now, when it comes to your cat's eyes, I always tell people your cat's eyes are the windows to the soul. And And my old cat, Lily, actually was partially blind in one eye. And it's because the previous owner didn't take care of an eye problem and it ended up resulting in temporary blindness. Unfortunately, that resulted in a really bad scar over her eye. And I can't imagine how annoying that would be for her to look out and see this cloudy white appearance over her cornea. So that's why I'm so passionate about educating you on what you need to know to preserve your cat or your dog's vision. Now, before we go into specific eye problems that your dog or cat can get, I want to start with a little bit of anatomy. Now, I know this part sounds boring, but this is really important so you understand what you're looking at when you're looking at your pet's eye. Now, if we move from the front to the back of the eye, the very front part, or what I call the windshield of the eye, is called the cornea. And this is what protects the eyeball. If you've ever put contact lens into your eye, this is what you're sticking the contact lens onto, onto the cornea. And this should be super clear. It should be pristine, just like a windshield. And this is going to protect the eyeball. Now, as an ER vet, I will tell you the most common injuries that I end up seeing are injuries to the cornea. And so if you've ever gotten an eyelash on your cornea, you know it's super itchy and really painful. Same thing with dogs and cats. When they get an eyelash or they get a foreign body like a plant seed in there, it can actually be really irritating and actually ulcerate the eye. So the first problem that I see are problems with the cornea. The next part of the eye is called the pupil. And in cats, this is a vertical slit-like to round part of the center of the eye. And this is what lets light into the back of the eye. So if you're in a really sunny room, you'll notice that your cat has these vertical slits. And this is in the center of the colored part of your cat's eye. If you're in a really dark room, you may notice that your cat's eyes are really dilated. And that's because the pupil is really quick to adjust to the amount of light. If there's a low light setting, the pupil's gonna dilate. If it's really, really sunny, then the pupil's gonna constrict down. The next part of the eye is the beautiful iris. And this is the pigmented part of your cat's eye. So my cat right now has beautiful copper eyes. Your cat may have green, blue, or brown eyes. This is sort of the circular, colorful part of the eye. And this also responds to light. 
Now we're gonna get to the inside of the eye and this part you can't see well as a pet owner. The next part is the lens and this is what causes you to need reading glasses as you age, which sadly for me, I'm just at the cusp of needing. The lens is sort of like the contact lens structure. It's invisible, but it helps the eye focus. The next part of the eye is the back of the eye called the retina, or the fancy word is the tapetum lucidum. This is a really thin membrane that lies on the inside part of the eyeball. Now, if you remember the old cameras we used to use, when you took a picture with a flash, you often got that red eye. Well, that's actually just a reflection from the tapetum lucidum. And this is where the cells called the rods and cones of the eye live. And in the cat, they actually have really good night vision, which is why they're nocturnal, and it's because of the retina. The last two areas of the eye are the optic nerve, and this is a big nerve that is in the back of the eye. You can't see this at all, but this is one of the reasons why if you ever go to a human doctor, they may look in the back of your eye with this device. We're trying to look at the nerve. Now, the eyeball is surrounded by tissue, and if you look in the corner of your own eye, you'll see the white of the eyeball. This is called the sclera, and this is basically the white of the eye. It's a membrane that protects and encases the whole eyeball. Now the whole eyeball is surrounded by conjunctiva. Now, if you've ever had pink eye, this is what gets really inflamed. And I'm gonna talk about this because cats actually get conjunctivitis. So that's the world's fastest review of anatomy, but it's really important because it helps us know what we're looking at when you're looking at your dog or cat's eye. Now I'm gonna focus specifically on cats in this episode, but I'm gonna give you a couple of signs to look for. And if you ever notice any of these signs, please get to a veterinarian. Some of these are so severe, you actually have to wake up in the middle of the night to go to the ER vet because we're trying to preserve your pet's vision. Now, some signs can be really mild from excessive tearing. There's a fancy word for that called epiphora. But if your cat has chronic upper respiratory infections, you may notice some excessive tearing from the corner of the eye. This is much more common in smushed faced cat breeds. So cats like Persians or Himalayans, they're more at risk for upper respiratory infections. They often have problems with the duct that goes from their eye to their nose. So they oftentimes will have excessive tearing. But if your cat doesn't normally have that and all of a sudden has it, that can be an indicator of an eye problem. If your cat is squinting, your cat normally looks at you, the eyes are clear, there shouldn't be any discharge. If all of a sudden your cat is squinting, if there's redness to the eye or discharge from the eye, whether it's green or yellow or cloudy, that warrants a trip to the veterinarian. If there's discharge or cloudiness or discoloration of the surface of the eye. Now, most pet owners don't notice this until they actually see it, but dogs and cats have a third eyelid. And this is actually this slightly hard piece of triangular tissue that pops up in the corner of the eye closest to the nose. When you see the third eyelid pop up, it looks like this little piece of straight pink triangle. And whenever that happens, that's abnormal also. If you notice a lot of swelling or pinkness to the conjunctiva around the eye, if you notice any haziness or lack of sharpness to the iris or the colored part of the eye, if your cat's eye seems painful or uncomfortable, if your cat is pawing at the eye, if you notice any lumps or masses, or if the eyelids seem uneven or asymmetrical, if your cat's eye is really sunken or bulging, if there's black spots on the eye or the colored part of the eye, if your cat's constantly keeping their eyes closed, if your cat all of a sudden can't see, these are all signs you have to get to your vet or your emergency vet immediately. Now, I realize that's a huge long list of eye problems, but the main reason why I'm telling you this is because whenever you see anything abnormal, you wanna get to your veterinarian. And again, some of these warrant going to the ER vet because you wanna make sure that your cat's vision is preserved because untreated, again, it can result in blindness, just like the cat that I adopted. So what is your vet gonna do once you bring your cat in to the vet or to the ER vet? Well, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna get a good history. Does your cat go outside? It could have fought with another tomcat and gotten a cat scratch on the surface of the eye. Is your cat vaccinated for feline leukemia? These are important questions because sometimes certain diseases or infectious diseases can cause eye problems. Is your cat urinating or drinking a lot? 
Did you just add a bunch of new kittens into the household? Are you fostering a bunch of kittens? Do any of your cats have a medical problem, such as feline infectious peritonitis, FIV? Does your cat have a history of being exposed to a chemical? Maybe you were spraying oven cleaner into the oven and your cat walked by and some accidentally splashed into your cat's eye. So we'll want to get a thorough history. The next thing I want to do is I want to do a thorough physical examination. And that's because I want to look at the eye, the ears. I want to listen to the heart and lungs. I still want to feel for the thyroid. I want to feel your cat's kidneys, bladder, organs, just to make sure nothing else is going on. The third thing I'll do is I'm going to do specific ocular tests. And ocular just means eyeball. There's a couple of tests that we need to do. And the first test is usually something called a Schirmer tear test. If you've ever worn contact lenses and you go to your optometrist or an ophthalmologist, they may stick this white piece of paper into the corner of your eye. They're basically trying to test the tear function of your cat's eye or on you. The next thing I want to do is I want to do a fluorescein stain. And this sounds fancy, but it's literally just dropping an orange to green dye on the surface of both your cat's eyes because this is the easiest way for me to see if your cat has an ulcer or a scratch on the eye. Sometimes I'll do a fancier test called corneal cytology. This is when I use a sterile Q-tip and I take a few cells off the surface of your cat's eye because I'm trying to look to see if there's an underlying infection. And lastly, once in a while, we'll do an intraocular pressure test. And that's a fancy way of saying that we're testing for glaucoma. Remember decades ago, we used to do that annoying test where you got that puff of air, makes you blink right away in humans. Well, we don't actually do that in dogs and cats. It's a different type of test that we use called a tonometer. And glaucoma is super, super rare in cats, but it is important for us to talk about. Now, once I've done all these tests, I might have to do a little more testing depending on what the problem is. This may include some blood tests. I know you're probably thinking, if your cat has a diagnosis of uveitis, which is inflammation of the inside of the eye, there can be a lot of underlying infections like feline leukemia, feline infectious peritonitis, feline immunodeficiency virus, or other viral infections that can cause these problems. We also want to make sure to check general health of your cat. And that includes a complete blood count and chemistry panel. And we're doing that because we want to make sure your cat doesn't have kidney problems, liver problems, an infection, or hyperthyroidism. In a previous episode of ER Vet, We've talked about what type of blood tests need to be done in the ER. So make sure to check out that episode. All right, so what have we done so far? We've monitored your cat for some clinical signs. Once you get to the vet, we wanna get a thorough history. We wanna make sure to do a thorough physical exam. And I'm gonna do specific eyeball tests, plus or minus blood work, depending on what the underlying problem is. Now we'll continue back with this really important topic right after these messages from our sponsors. As a dog owner and veterinarian, I spoil my own dog, Milo. Not only does he get to sleep on my bed, but he gets his pick of treats whenever we go to the pet store. I want to take great care of him as he pays it back tenfold in loyalty and affection. I want to keep him as happy and healthy as possible. That's why I like to give him a dental treat that offers more. Daily Dose is a two-in-one dual benefit dog chew that supports dental hygiene and full body health. With Daily Dose, your dog gets a daily dental scrub and powerful supplements to help with the biggest health concerns facing our dogs. Daily Dose was developed by veterinarians to be simple to use and super effective. Plus, dogs love the taste. It comes in four types, available for joint, skin, heart health, or calming. What I like about them, they have ingredients that I'd recommend as a veterinarian, and they're made in the USA. To help keep your dog happier and healthier, try Daily Dose, because one chew a day may keep your veterinarian away. Visit yourpetsdailydose.com to save $3 on your first bag with promo code ERVET. That's E-R-V-E-T. It's more than a treat. It's a treatment. One chew a day for happier, healthier dog ears. Are you listening to this right now with a cell phone clenched between your teeth as you frantically flip pages on your paper calendars? Or are you a new breed of groomer, bred for speed and efficiency of movement? 
123 Pet Software automates your communications, doing the reminding, confirming, thanking, and marketing for you. 123 Pet centralizes your schedule, employees, clients, inventory, and more. 123 Pet is the business management software you need. Start minding your business today. Visit 123PetSoftware.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Welcome back to ER Vet. Today we've been talking about eyeball problems in cats. We talked a little bit about the anatomy. We talked about the clinical signs you have to look for. Again, if your cat is showing signs of excessive tearing, squinting, abnormal changes to the surface of the eye or the size of the eye or the color of the eye, third eyelid elevation, pinkness to the conjunctival tissue, if your cat's keeping their eyes closed, or if their eyes seem painful, if they're sensitive to light, if they're acutely blind, please get to the ER vet or your veterinarian right away. And again, that's because we're going to want to do a couple of specific ocular tests to find out what's going on. All right, so let's get to the meat of this. What common eye problems do cats get? Well, I will say in the ER, the most common, again, is usually a corneal problem. Maybe your cat has a cat scratch. This is one of the reasons why it's so important that you keep your cat's nails well trimmed, especially if you get a new puppy or introduce a new pet into the household. The sharper your cat's nails are, the more damage it can cause to the cornea because they're so sharp, they can actually puncture the eye. If there's a corneal problem, most of the time I'm treating that with an antibiotic topically on the eye one of those funnel hats or what we call an Elizabethan collar or an e-collar and different pain medications. Some other eyelid problems that I can see include pink eye. Now, don't worry. While your cat can get pink eye, it's usually not contagious to you. So don't worry about that quite as much. Couple other problems that we can see are eyelid abnormalities. This is less common in cats, but if your cat has really saggy eyelids, sometimes they actually need a facelift. Yes, you heard me right. They need an eyelid tuck. This is called entropion, and this is when the eyelids roll either inward or in a different direction, and these tiny eyelashes are scratching the eye. Less common, but something to be aware of. Another problem I see is what I call an iris abnormality. The iris or the colored part of the eye can actually become abnormally pigmented. It almost looks like freckles on the colored surface of the eye. And this is called iris melanosis. However, in certain cats, this can actually progress to eye cancer called melanoma. So if you're looking at your cat's eye and notice this abnormal, almost mass-like or dot-like appearance to your cat's iris, you want to get to your vet because sometimes we actually have to remove the eye to prevent that cancer from spreading to the rest of the body. Another common problem in cats is something called conjunctivitis. Fancy word is keratitis, refers to inflammation on the cornea. Sometimes I'll see this from upper respiratory infections. Now I've talked about upper respiratory infections extensively on a previous episode of ER Vet. Most of the time this is from a Khaleesi virus or a herpes virus. Don't worry, nothing contagious to you, but something that's highly contagious to other cats. If I see new kittens or new cats being introduced into a household, some cats will all of a sudden get this pink eye that progresses to inflammation on the cornea. Some cats will also get a certain type of white blood cell inflammation, something called eosinophilic keratoconjunctivitis. It's a mouthful, but we typically will numb your cat's eye, take a sterile sample with a cotton Q-tip, and look at those cells under a microscope. In that situation, those cats oftentimes will need long-term topical eye steroids, and I usually recommend having long-term follow-up with a veterinary ophthalmologist to prevent your cat's vision from being affected. One other disease that I can see quite commonly as an ER vet is a detached retina. Now, if you ever watch football or hockey, you may hear of the occasional athlete that takes a check to the head and they detach the back of their eye. This is called a retinal detachment. And this is really, really, really dangerous because it can result in blindness. Well, to be quite honest, this is probably the, the third most common problem I see in the veterinary ER. And when I see a detached retina, 
when you look at your cat's eye, they're all of a sudden blind. They're all of a sudden have a really dilated pupil. And you may notice almost this white sheet that's floating in your cat's eye. This is the back of the eye and it's detached. The number one reason why I see retinal detachment is from really high blood pressure. I'm a firm believer that any cat over 10 years of age should always, always, always have a blood pressure done every single year when you go in for your annual examination. Whenever you go to a human MD, they always take their blood pressure. Well, blood pressures are really similar between species. Same exact blood pressure for a dog, cat, and human. In general, we don't want your systolic blood pressure to be greater than 120. Normal is 120. Blood pressure really high, like greater than 180 to 190 to 200, can actually cause long-term effects. And I usually see hypertension in cats with chronic kidney disease, an overactive thyroid, or what we call hyperthyroidism, or heart disease. When their blood pressure gets so high, unfortunately, it can actually cause that delicate cell layer in the back of the eye, the retina, to blow off from the eye. And again, this is typically when your cat's systolic blood pressure is greater than 180 to 200 millimeters of mercury. That's why it's so important that you always talk to your veterinarian and go in for an annual examination, especially as your cat ages, because we want to prevent this. Most of the time, if a cat has detached the retina, it can result in permanent blindness. So the sooner we can diagnose it, the sooner we want to treat it. The last medical problem that we can see in your cat's eye is something called uveitis. And I will fully disclose, I hate uveitis. I just diagnosed a cat with it a few weeks ago. And the frustrating thing about uveitis is it's just a fancy word for saying acute inflammation. But it means there's an acute inflammation in the inside part or the front part of the eye, sort of in the colored part and forward. When we see uveitis, it usually is seen as ocular cloudiness. So you look at your cat's eye and you notice that it doesn't look as sharp as normal. You may notice a change in the pupil size, redness, or excessive tearing. Unfortunately, uveitis requires a pretty expensive medical workup because there's a lot of underlying infectious causes that can cause uveitis. Even immune problems can cause uveitis. That means your inflammatory system or your white blood cells are a bit out of whack. So diseases like feline leukemia, FIV, FIP, toxoplasma, cancer, bacterial infections, immune problems can all cause uveitis. I always warn pet owners when I diagnose a cat with uveitis, it typically takes about $1,000 in blood work and testing in order to find out what's going on. And treatment for uveitis typically requires oral and topical antibiotics, oral and topical steroids, and careful monitoring of your cat's intraocular pressure because one of the side effects that we can see from it is glaucoma. The last two cat problems that we can see are cataracts or glaucoma. And these are less common compared to dogs, but they can result in blindness and a lot of pain. Now, this is much more common in dogs than cats, but please be aware when it comes to your cat's eyes, we always wanna make sure that we're keeping an eye out for them because we wanna make sure that we can maintain their vision. Keep in mind that if you have leftover medication from a previous cat or from a previous visit to a veterinarian from five years ago, please don't automatically put those eye medications in. Why? Because again, the number one problem I see at the ER vet in cats is a corneal scratch or a corneal ulceration. Depending on what type of medication you're putting in, some of those medications can actually make your cat's eye worse. Now, with a corneal ulcer, we never, ever, ever, ever treat that with a steroid because that can actually make the ulcer worse. And cats can have really rare but life-threatening anaphylactic reactions to triple antibiotic ointment that usually has neomycin and bacitracin in it. So we don't use dog medications in cats. We don't reach for routine older medications. When in doubt, you want to put one of those funnel hats on your cat so they don't injure the eye more. You want to get to your ER vet or your veterinarian right away. Remember, while your cat may have nine lives, your cat only has two eyes. So we want to keep them as healthy as possible. Well, that brings me to the end of today's show. Find me at drjustinelee.com, on Facebook or Instagram at drjustinelee, or email me your pet questions at drjustine at petliferadio.com. 
With that, we'd like to thank our producer, Mark Winter, for making this show possible. See you at the next episode. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.